Uh, we've got a couple people here from the Free Library of Philadelphia, and we're going to be talking about the graphic novel edition of Monster, which was adapted by Guy Sims. So he's going to be sharing some of that process and answering some of our questions. As you may already know, my name is Yona, and I'm the after school leader at Field Teen Center. And hi, I'm Melissa. I'm one of the library assistants at the Field Teen Center. Cool. Dr. Sims, would you like to introduce yourself and your job sure. title at the Free Library and also your role with this book? Sure, sure. Um, my, hello, everybody. Guy Sims. Uh, I'm the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer here at the library. I've been here for going, getting ready to go on to two years. But the, the other side of Guy Sims is Guy Sims, the writer. And um, I was tapped to uh, adapt uh, the monster. Uh, the monster book, uh, and worked alongside my uh, my brother uh, Dawu Anyabuile, who is the uh, the illustrator. Cool. I think Melissa was going to start us off with a question for Dr. Sim sure. before he gets into his presentation. Yeah. So we just want to know what were you like as a teen? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. As as a teen, I was. I, I, I grew up here in Philadelphia, grew up in Mount Airy, um, you know, went to Houston School, Germantown High School, um, and it, it, I was always, always a reader, always liked to write, and I tried to combine being a regular teen, hanging out in the streets with my friends, uh, with, with, um, with my love for writing. I used to carry around the small spiral, uh, little spiral notebook that you can just flip up because I would always, uh, I used to write a lot of poems and, and I could do that around my friends. I, you know, in TV, if you do that or in the movies, your friends ostracize you or tease you. But uh, my friends were always very good about it, um, whether they wanted me to write, you know, little poems for girls they met or, you know, I could just tell them my, my ideas and, and they would think it was fine. We'd play basketball. I would sit down, do my thing, play a little football in the street, whatever. And, and so that, that was me. I, I just like to always find the time to sit down and write, whether it was just by myself, um, walking around the neighborhood and trying to develop stories or, uh, you know, just with my friends. You know, but, you know, I came from a real creative house. All my brothers were like sci-fi, um, um, music, uh, two brothers were into film. My, my other brother I told you about is the illustrator, always in art. So we always did a lot of collaborative stuff. So. We, we, we're, we're a fun bunch of kids. I that love sounds that. like yeah, that sounds like such a great environment to yeah. grow up in yeah. and to like really foster those interests and oh, skills yeah. that you had. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. It, it was it was great. And, and our parents, well, if you ever wanted to do something uh, talent wise, they they said they always said, "Are you sure?" And then they would go ahead and uh, they get you what you needed. I, I think of all my brothers, I was the uh, least expensive. I just needed pens and paper. You know, right. my other brother artist, he needed, you know, all the art material and the ones that were in film and stuff like that, cameras, mm. film, all that good projectors, editing stuff. You know, I, I was I was a low cost kid. Well, it's really interesting, actually, that you had a sibling who is interested in filming cameras because that's exactly what is going on with the main character in the book. And it comes into play a lot in how he uh, imagines what's happening to him and thinks about how he wants to tell his story. Right. Uh, I'm very curious to hear if that like influenced how you, uh, like what you brought to this adaptation of the novel. Well, you know, I'll say while it might not have influenced it, it, it helped me understand it because that's what I used to do, walk around the neighborhood you know, and always craft stories about things that are happening. It might not have happened exactly like that, but I was like, how can I craft getting your bike stolen? What, what, is, what, is, what is that like? You know, not, I've never had a bike stolen, but I've had a bike almost stolen, and I know other kids had bikes stolen. Or, um, you know, what, you know, one time, we, you know, we were playing football on the street, football went down the sewer, and we lowered you know, the idea was to lower someone down into the sewer 
and I was the one to get lowered into the sewer. And but you know that that conjured up a story, uh, several stories. One about what happens if I had fallen in, like they let me go, you know, um, you know, little little sci-fi type story. You know, I, I would say I was more influenced by um, the Wonderful World of Disney because they used to have those shows where kids will walk down the street and find a treasure map. Next thing you know, they're on an adventure. I tried to catch those kinds of uh, stories as well, uh, as well as more realistic stories. So. Getting back to your other, uh, your point, I, I was always observant of my environment and try to capture it. And I think that's what um, uh, uh, his teacher, um, Steve's teacher, encouraged him to do: take your camera and capture your uh, your community, let people know what you see. Mm. We have a bunch of other questions, but a lot of, of them are about like how how do how did you make this happen how did you get involved and i suspect that a lot of those questions will be answered in this presentation that you put together for us sure and if not you can ask them and but i I'm, i think i'll try to cover a lot of things cool all right so am i up i think so all right well i'm going, to share, yours. My, <laughs> I'm going to share my screen and get this thing going okay screen is shared and the thing is an action, okay. So first thing I wanna do is always just acknowledge, you know, this is a collaborative effort. And this is my brother, uh, Dawood Anyabwile, also from Philly, he went to Central High School. Um, uh, he's an Emmy winning artist, um, as you can see, a couple of, a lot of awards. Um, he's now working for, um, well, we have a couple of books here at the library that, um, that he also is involved in uh, becoming Ali is a new book. Uh, there's a new book out about Tommy Smith. He was the uh, the, uh, the black track runner in the 1964 Olympics. I, I might have it off, but he was the one that raised his fist while he was standing on the podium. Um, so he, he, he did that book. There's a Kwame Alexander books and he does the illustration for the Kwame Alexander books as well. But he's now working with Lion Forge. And you might know Lion Forge, maybe not by name, but there was a movie last year that won an Oscar called, <clears throat> called Hair Love. Um, and if you say, I don't know Hair Love, you know, just go to YouTube and type in Hair Love and you'll see that animation piece. He's now uh, working for that company. But um, just growing up, he's uh, four years my junior. Um, we, we've worked on so many things as kids together. Uh, we put together the first um, children's book on Kwanzaa. We put together the first handbook on Kwanzaa. Um, we had a little t-shirt company coming up. And so we just did a lot of stuff together. So he is really like my uh, true creative partner. Uh, my other brothers were in film um, and, and all of that stuff. But both he and I, we, you know, we're doing, we do all the concept work. So that's, that's kind of neat. Um, also want to acknowledge uh, my library that I used to hang out at was the Lovett Library uh, right up there on Germantown and Cedric Street. And what was neat about that particular library um, is this, uh, where it's situated, you have the library, and if, you, if you're not familiar, or if you are familiar, you know, right across the street is uh, the old Cedric Playground, now it's called Mount Airy Playground. And then across the street from the playground was Acme. And so you would just come on up, slide through Acme, you know, get your snack, hang out at the playground till you get all hot and sweaty, then go to the library, and do your thing. But a lot of times I, I would hit the playground first just to you know, connect with friends. And then I said, oh, I got a story I want to write, whatever. And then I spend the rest of my time at the, at the library. So just big ups to, uh, to love it. All people know about that. So, and then just about me in school, you know, I, a teacher called me a, a chatterbox. I think it's probably the nicest thing. I was very talkative in class. And I remember in, in second grade, uh, the teacher said, because what I would do is um, just talk and uh, just talk about stories. So she said to me, how about this on Fridays, you know, like must've been like five or three or whatever. She would say, if you behave in class, I'll let you tell a story at the end of class. And so I'm like, great, because now I have a spotlight. And so I would tell a story, bell rings, we head on home. But then someone would ask, hey, tell that story you told last week. And I didn't quite remember. And that's when that teacher said, guy, you got to write them down. So that's what we're going to track. 
of writing stories down. So I started doing that. Um, I, I, think I, I think because I had a lot of ideas and I wanted to share them, that made me a, a kind of challenging uh, kid. I'm always very curious about about things, but more brutally, I think I'm always curious about people and what happens to people and what do they think about. And when I hear people, you know, I used to, you know, in high school, you catch the bus and the sub, uh, either to school or to go downtown or whatnot. I, you know, I always hear people's conversations and I'm like, what are they talking about? And, and of course today they're on the phones, but back then, you know, they're just talking to each other in, in the cars. And I'm like, what are they talking about? And I only get maybe five minutes of their conversation because, you know, they get up and people come back and forth. And I remember what people say. And if it's impactful, I would always write it down. Uh, of course, that leads to your imagination. I'm trying to fill in. It's kind of like Jurassic Park. You know, they had the uh, dino DNA, but there were gaps in it. So they filled it up with the uh, frog DNA. And that's what I'm doing. I, I, I take pieces of reality of things that people are really talking about. I said, no way, I can add this and add this to make uh, to make something I think super. And I'm also very introspective. Um, my parents know I'm very sensitive and because I think about a lot of things and and I think it, to be introspective and, and to be sensitive like that, it helps me, you know, if, you know, how do I how do I show a character is sad? And I, I think about it, what, what makes me sad, what makes me hurt, what makes me angry. So I, I think about all those things and well, that brings me to awful. And I think I'm a pretty awful person. So um, yeah, that is here. But I do want to start with a quote actually from Walter D. Myers. Um, he, he said that uh, he thinks it's difficult for young people to acknowledge being smart, uh, to acknowledge being a reader. He sees kids who are embarrassed to read books and they're embarrassed to have people see them do it. And that's interesting because in his book, Bad Boy, he does this, he does that. He's in the library, he's leaving, he sees some guys that he knows, and so he hides his books in a, in a brown paper bag. Uh, convers not conversely, but additional, additionally, Will Smith said the same thing. Will Smith was on his way to go into engineering, but he would hide his books in a pizza box so people wouldn't tease um, him about reading, you know, people, you know, you know, who are you, what are you reading? What are you, an egghead? You know, you know, all, all that stuff. I've, you know, I've heard it, but you know, like I said, my friends are pretty good about it. Cause I can't even walk around with small, uh, small paperback novels. And see, they knew me and they knew my family. And so they just say, Hey, that's just, that's just guy sense. But I do know people that, that got teased for when you, when you show your, your intelligence or some things like that. I tell people, ignore them, go bypass them. And uh, another quote, this is from my brother. He says that the writer is the director. Um, you know, because he does a lot of things in film as well. Um, uh, he did storyboarding for The Walking Dead. He did storyboarding for the, the new edition uh, TV, that telemovie, Bobby Brown. There's commercials you've seen, Spider-Man commercials, Cartoon Network, all this stuff. Um, and he, one day we were talking because I was laying out a book for him and he said, guy, you know, you're the director. And I said, what do you mean? He said, because you direct all of the action within the book, because since you write it, you know, what's going to happen. And you tell me as the, as the artist, what has to happen. I never, never thought about it that way. So I, I appreciate his sentiment. But now I think we're ready to, to get into it. And so, um, oh, oh. What is the, the value of a graphic novel? Always, some people are, are you know, they just think it's a, 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 a fat comic book. But um, I think one thing, uh, it appeals to resistant readers. There's some people, some kids who just, you know, they don't want, they don't want to pick up a book and they just find it, you know, a, a chore. But um, they like graphic novels and 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 the visuals. They really help. There's, there's nothing wrong with visuals. We're visual. We're visual people. Um, it helps bring context to challenging and and sensitive materials. Like you know, in Monster, uh, things are happening uh, outside the jail and outside when he's when he's in jail in the courtroom. And how do you, how do you help people process that? I think the graphic novel does a good job, and it also encourages readers to rethink how to interpret. Uh, standard material. 
you know, how, how do we interpret what's happening within the text? Um, you know, you can read just words on a page and you might not have the experience and you're trying to understand what's going on. And, but now you, now you see a picture and it's not that now that I see the picture, I know exactly, I know exactly what's going on. It's now I see that picture. It reminds me of something else within my life or my, another experience. And now I can bring all that together. So I think that's kind of, that's kind of neat. And, and when you, when you create these graphic novels, uh, it's cross-discipline cooperation. Um, like I said, it's me and my brother working together. But then there's a there's another part. It's the people that put the book together, the layout people. It's the people that do the the lettering. Um, there's um, in the color books you have inking and you know inking and color. So it's a lot of people that go to, that, that work to to get the final product. And so um, I think that's that's a real strong value to the, the graphic novels. So now let's get to what we're here to talk about: Monster by Walter Dean Myers. And let me tell you this. My brother knew Walter Dean Myers because he worked on uh, a couple of other Walter Dean Myers uh, books. Uh, I was new to Walter Dean Myers. I never got a chance to meet him. Uh, when I, I drafted my first couple of pages, uh, I sent them to him, you know, and I waited a couple of days. I think a week went by. And then his representative called and said, oh, he loves it. He loves it. I was like, great but you know he passed away uh, before I could get to meet him my brother had the chance to meet him but this is Walter Dean Myers if you didn't get a chance to to, to see his face you know he passed away in 2014 um, but you know in, in reading his material well first of all I'll tell you I, I think as a, you know I'm, I'm an older guy you know when his books are, 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 are young adult or teen books so I think when his books came out, I was I was past that age to, to read them. And but you know, I got the, the job to work on it. And I went to New York uh, to visit my um, uh, cousins and my aunts. And my uh, I have one aunt who's in publishing, but most of the rest of them are uh, school teachers. And you know, we're sitting around the table and I said, Oh yeah, by the way, I'm working on this book with Dawu. They're like, oh, what book is it? I said, Oh, Monster by Walter Dean Myers. I mean, they exploded. They were going crazy. You know, I might as well say, I'm working on the Michael Jackson book. They were going crazy. And they talked about, they just uh, talked him up so much um, because they use him in their classrooms. And my, of course, my aunt who's in publishing, that she knows his work. And I'm really glad that I, I really didn't know who he was to start. Because I think I might've been intimidated at the outset. But once they said who he was, then I, I told myself, then I got to make this the best possible project I can work on. No half stepping, no cutting corners. Uh, this is this is this has to be um, um, my best work. So um, when all was said and done, um, of course the the company said it was great, and his family said it was great. So uh, I'll take it from there. So let me just show you, if you, I don't know if you have the original book. Uh, I know you have it here at the library. But, um, the original My confession, book that, I've never read the actual book. I have only read the graphic novel adaptation. Oh, okay. okay. And I, I, <laughs> we I, do I, own okay. it, though. Okay, yeah. I, now, and I'll make, I'll make a reference to what I've, the difference between the two. Yeah. But, um, yeah. You know, on the left is the 1999 book, and you can see those three circles in the middle. Those are awards that the, the book had received. And then this is the uh, the book that you have in your hands, the uh, 2015, 2015 book. And it has a little sticker on there that says, uh, <laughs> so, so here were some of the challenges that I had in putting the, uh, putting the um, doing, doing my role in putting the book together. Um, first, you know, taking existing material, you know, like I said, I'm very creative and I like creating my own work. And so this was the first time I was working with material that was already there. And how do I honor that material? And build, and I question, do I have room to put the guy Sims spin on it? So that was a question that was sitting in my mind. Um, two, how, how do I make sure I'm interpreting it correctly? Um, you know, 
he was writing it about uh, the kid in New York, you know, the criminal justice system, all of that. And here I am, I'm from Philadelphia, never been involved in the criminal justice system. Um, uh, you know, I've only been the, you know, I, I said uh, a jury duty once, you know, so I'm like, man, can I, can I interpret this? You know, the story takes place in Harlem. You know, I grew up in Mount Airy, you know, so the, once again, the, that just sat in my mind. Would I be able to do it? Three, if you, if you get a chance to read the book, please do. But you'll notice in in the in 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 the in the straight novel, it's a lot of conversation. I mean, you you'll go for a page and a half of just one person talk, one person talk. A lot of it takes place in, in in the courtroom. So yes, you have attorneys making long statements. I said, how do I turn that into images? I certainly just can't take, you know, a page and a half of text. And draw a bubble and tell my brother, oh, just draw a bubble around it. And it, that won't work. So I have to, I have to go back and forth between what someone is saying and give the audience another way of, of, of experiencing um, the text. Uh, and then of course the transition between reality and Steve's imagination. And how do I make sure I can balance it, not to confuse people of is this real? Is this not real? Um, I don't. I didn't want to leave the readers with any any questions. So those are some of the challenges that I know I had to face um, in putting the in putting the book together. Um, so as you see here, like on, in the picture that's on the screen, you know, I use a lot of narration. You know, I'm drawing direct quotes from the book um, and use multiple narration uh, bubbles or boxes. So to the, 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 the to exemplify what's being said. And just like my brother said, the director, I have to tell my brother, uh, you see, I want the dad crying and I want him to be in anguish and then put these words here. So I, I think that's a, a real quick um, example, but we'll get to that. I think one of the, of the next challenge was the, the characters because I now have to tell, tell my brother or it, I'm working on other projects with other people. They'll say, what do people look like? And now, and once again, now they put that back on me. How do I see what they look like? And of course, in the first book, there's very little description about anybody. It's just, it's Steve. It's you know, with, a, with a medium build. It's mom and dad. It's Mr. Sawecki. It's, um, you know, the attorneys. Uh, I think I know only one, one attorney had red hair. Um, and some of the other guys, King and 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 that group, you know, there's no real. This is what they look like, and so actually that works out to my advantage because now as I read, I say, you know, this guy reminds me of so and so. So this is what I do um, normally uh, uh, with my brother, especially with my brother. Um, but if I'm working with somebody else, I, I tend to use uh, celebrities and then let them interpret the studies. So here we go. So this is the comedian, Tammy Pescatelli. Um, but this is Sandra Petricelli from the book, The, the Defense Attorney. Um, and that's, that's from a scene in the book, this mask and his hair. Um, let me see. Then you have uh, this actress, Amy Madigan, I, when, when they describe the red hair and just pick the, you know, they just come to me. So it, it's not anything special about Amy Madigan. Well, they're you know, special. She's an actress. Okay. And so that's how we get Kathy O'Brien, um, Steve's attorney. Let me see. Uh, this is the rapper Rakim, and that became the uh, the model for uh, James King, uh, one of the guys uh, involved with the robbery. Um, some of you might know rapper Rick Ross. Um, and he came out to be uh, Richard Bobo Evan. I think that was probably one of the other guys. He was he was just bigger, and I was just thinking, okay, if he's bigger, let me give him that look. Um, oh, and uh, you see where it says "sup, y'all." Um, I put that in there. That's not in the book, so that's a, that's a place where I could find a guy's cynicism. Okay, uh, most of you might know Christian Bale. Um, I thought about him when I was thinking about Mr. Sawicki, uh, the teacher. Uh, who do we have? Uh, 
was one of the guys from the Temptations. And the only reason why I picked him, I just figured how old Steve's father probably was. Um, I just started imagining folk, and I just started scrolling through pictures, and his his picture came up. But here's uh, Steve's dad. And then who did I get for his mom? Oh, Anita Baker. I don't even know how where, where she came from, but I'm glad she did because that's how um, I got Steve's mother. And who's left? Oh. I came to Steve. Um, I used my nephew because he was he was around uh, he was around that age, and this is uh, actually um, my brother's son. And so there you go. Um, so that's how those two uh, came together. Uh, let me see. You know what that yep. process reminds me of a little bit. <sighs> a lot of people who are huge fans of a franchise, like a, a book series, especially, and you'll see this on Tumblr. They'll fan cast. There, yes. like which yes. celebrities that they yes. like, like you did that and manifested it. It's so cool to see. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, um, there's a page in the book. Damn hey, man, I'm not, I should remember what page it was. I call it a fanfare page. Um, um, you know, I, you know, I, I, w I was a teen in the in the seventies, and if you wanted to go to the movies, you know, all the movie houses were down there on. Market Street and Chestnut Street, Sansom Street. Um, but the thing about the the the, uh, uh, the movies were the movie posters, and a lot of movie posters did the same thing. They would um, 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 have the poster up there, and as you can see, going around the poster, it's like all the characters from the movie. So this is from Sydney the Iron Tiger, the Poseidon Adventure, and look, they get get all the all the stars are in the book in the movie. This is from uh, Bingo Long, you know, all the characters. And so they used to get you excited. And they used to also have stills from the movies in the, in the, um, in the, in the case. So you could see, oh, this is going to be in the movie to get you, get you hyped up for it. And so I thought about that when I said, I have to introduce all of the characters who are going to be in the courtroom. Um, but I did, I said, I just can't say, I wasn't sure how, how I could do it. And I, I reflected back on this experience. I said, okay, so that leads me to um, here's Steve in the courtroom. And now I can tell you everybody who's in the move in, in the in the book and who they are. It's kind of like an introduction to everybody, but that's where that came from. Um, you know, you have the witness and you have the the wannabe and the prosecutor, the rat, the thug, and and, and the attorney with many doubts, and and of course the judge there, and and that's this is this is the the story that Steve is going into. Um, now, I'll kind of talk about the process. Um, how do I? Yes, I do what I do. Oh, I know I have to leave this. Oh, not a new share. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Da, 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 da. Oh, let me give me one second. I'm gonna stop my share for a second. Let me take a let me take a a, a quick break. I can uh, let me see. Uh, that's the 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 trickiness. Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. And get to uh, perfect. Give me a second, folks. That will give me give the computer a second. Okay, it's not me doing this. It's, it's uh, okay. So let me now share my screen once again. All right, so here's, here's give you an idea of the process and share. Okay, so now you can see this. Okay, so this is from the this is from the actual book. Um, this is like page 42 and 43. And and Steve is with his friend Tony. They're walking down a walkway. Uh, I'll give you a picture real quick. Uh, uh, they pick up a rock and they're trying to hit a uh, a lamppost. Okay, and in the course of throwing the rock, they accidentally hit a guy's girlfriend. Okay, and of course, um, um, guy comes around, hey, who threw that rock? And Steve says, Tony, run. And Steve's like, you know, he's hesitant. The guy comes over, um, 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 punches Tony, Tony falls down. You know, now Steve and Tony are arguing and Tony says, man, I should give me the Uzi and blow his brains out. So I said, okay, so now 
how do I how do I illustrate that? Okay, and then there's some uh, after that. This is Steve's comments because he, he he was reliving re, reliving this while he's sitting in jail. Okay, uh, waiting you know waiting for his trial. And he's just talking about some stuff that's going on. You know. Okay, so now here's where I come in. So now, as you can see, um, it's page 25. I'm keeping track of all the pages. And so that, so when my brother sees this or whoever I'm working with, if it's in these brackets or I'll bold it, he knows this is page 25 that we're working on. But in the brackets, it's pages 41, 42. So he, uh, whoever it is can go back and reference it in the book. So now in the first panel, I'll say there's a small circle. Steve looked like he's daydreaming. O'Brien, who's his attorney, is leaning into him. Uh, she says, hang in there, Steve. Don't fade on me. You're rocking. And that's where the rock comes from. So scene fades from courtroom to a street corner. And the narration says, rocking, rocking, rocks, rocks. And then now it's, once again, back to that same scenario. Walking, lamppost, you know, is in a short distance. And, and this is, you know, I have to describe the scenes also to the artist because if I need something there, I got to tell them where it is. So by the time they get to a certain panel, they arrive to it. So I just can't say, hey, have a lamppost. He could have had the lamppost really small or right, you know, right in the foreground. But so I got to gotta say where it is. And uh, Tony says, hey, let me pitch. I can throw straight at anything. Oh, man, you can't throw. Um, Steve is throwing the rock. It sails past the lamppost. Rockets and one young, hits the young woman on the shoulder. The guy with the girl is looking backwards towards Steve and Tony. He's like, what the hell? The tough guy runs up on Steve and Tony. Which one all through that rock? Steve says, run. Uh, Tony's starting to run, but gets grabbed by the guy. Series of punches. Where are you going? And then the girl, come on, he ain't worth it. And then, of course, the tough guy walking away. Don't nobody be hitting my woman with no rock. And, and, this is all my dialogue. Uh, <laughs> and you handle the baby. And of course, hug my jaw. And then it just goes on. And then uh, I didn't throw the rock. You threw it. And then Steve says, I didn't say you threw it. I told you to run. You should have run. I'm going to give me a boozy, blow his brains out. And then the large words that says cut stretches across the bottom of the screen. Okay, so that's in your book. So now this is where it then comes to. Steve in the in the courtroom. Uh, uh, you're hanging in there, Steve. You're rocking, rock, rock. So remember, I had him. They're kind of walking and looking at the lamp post, but then uh, the artist has to say, "I don't have enough room for all of that." So he just got to the point where the rock is hitting the lamp post. So we, and that's why I say it's collaborative. Because, of course, in my mind, I see something. But the artist has the page to work with. And so, you know, you, 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 you work it out. So as you can see, now everything is, what I put in two whole pages of text, he compressed down to one page of artwork. And so, got the rock, it misses, smack, hits the girl, what the hell. So as you can see, everything that I had on those uh, first two pages or whatever, it's all right here. And then, which one of y'all threw the rock? Tony, run. Where you going? Crack. I remember I said series of punches. He says you can do it in one. It tells the story. You know, but then again, don't, don't nobody hit my woman with no rock. You handled it, baby. Um, but my jaw. They, they get arguing. You know, I didn't say you did it. I just said, run. I'm going to get the Uzi to blow his brains out. Cut. And we're back in the courtroom. And when Steve is telling the story about, the, you know, of course, you know, all of this is a movie. So once he said cut, you can see, um, and now I'm taking you to another place. All the characters are interacting with each other as if they are actors. And but then he goes back. He hates this place. and you know, breaks over back to the action and he's back to um, uh, doing his thing. So now I think I can go back to, yes, it's working. Okay. 
So that's what brings me to that. So I'll stop right there and field any questions. And if we have time, I don't know how much time we have, I can go into the second graphic novel that um, my brother and I worked on. But I'll, I'll, field, I'll field some monster questions for you. Melissa, um, do you have any questions you want to jump in with? Yeah, questions. Um, one, I want to see that live action movie with your cast. <laughs> uh, and I, you got to have that super Hollywood budget to pull all those people. Right. <laughs> Maybe a time machine too. <laughs> oh yeah, a time machine too. Yeah. Um, which leads me to the question. Have you ever written any screenplays or are you interested in doing that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I've written a commercial. Um, my, my nephew, my brother's son, is um, a, a, a um, in film. Um, he does, uh, he, he works on a, a number of these big blockbusters. He's a special effects. Um, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of the Harry Potters. Um, we go to the movies all the time and we sit and watch his name roll up on the credits. Um, now I'm trying to think of, of because I think it makes sense between him and my brother, because my brother worked on like um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. My brother does the storyboarding, the nephew does special effects. And so uh, uh, the, that latest, one of those predators. Um, there's so many people that work on it. Uh, it's hard, to, he'll have to tell you, this is the part that I worked on. A couple, of, uh, a couple of Marvel movies uh, he's been involved in. Uh, so um, one time he was trying to pitch a commercial to McDonald's. And so he contacted me. And um, so I, I wrote, the, I wrote the, the, the script for the commercial. He filmed it. Um, it didn't get picked up, but, you know, we did that. Um, I've written a script for uh, How to Do Golf. But I've also written some... Um, 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 Full length films, short films. So, um, oh yeah, well, th there's a couple of things that are in the hopper that those things I can't share because I have to wait till they they come out. But I've written a um, a, a, a spec for a, a cartoon and a uh, script for a a film, and so I'm just waiting by October to see what's going to happen with those. But no, I think I think. You know, as, as a writer, you know, I started poetry, short stories. I, I have a, a story in this new anthology called Spy Funk um, that I, I'm just waiting for the book to come in the mail. Um, uh, short stories, um, yeah, film work, you know, the, the, the genre, it doesn't matter. Right? If I have an idea, I'm just trying to think how, do, how best do I um, uh, uh, present it? Well, speaking of presentation, can you talk a little bit about um, how you format something for a comic book script as opposed to a short story? And where did you learn those skills for writing in script specifically? Okay, sure. Um, for the comic book, okay, look, let me take a step back. In addition to liking to write, I was also involved in theater. Um, and being involved in theater, you know, means reading a lot of plays and plays have their own structure, their own writing structure. And so I used to write plays um, uh, coming up through elementary school um, and into high school. Why am I saying just those places? I, I had a play done when I was in another college that, that I wrote. Um, so I had uh, plays stage as well. So I understood the, the um, understood the stage uh, model for writing uh, those kind of scripts. And, you know, I, I had an idea of how to write a film script, but then I, I did take a course and, you know, I've read books and then I said, okay, I think I have it. And so, uh, you know, it, a little reading, uh, a little uh, uh, education, uh, they, they helped me go a long way, you know, but there's two parts to it. There's the technical part, and then you got to have your imagination, you know, all the creativity parts. So I said, I think I got the creativity part. Let me, let me get down to the technical part. And so um, uh, that's how I came to, uh, oh, so let me back it up. So the, the theater, 
the stage, the, the, the playwriting helped me with writing the comic book because it is kind of based, it is kind of, it is kind of like a play because I have to say panel one, this is, this is who's in the panel. This is what they say what, and you know, what action panel two. And so it, it works in the same, same format as if I could take away the pictures and just leave the script and, and you could, you can function as if it was a play because you you have all your stage direction um, on the page. Um, the film is a little bit a little bit more involved because you might have a little more camera action um, um, and those kinds of more camera direction, but they're they're they're, they're similar enough. Um, but those is the background in the theater and in the plays because theater also gave me understanding of dialogue and, and delivery and 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 emotion and that's what helps me um I put it into the book because i have to get the emotions very quickly you don't have the time to like in a in a, in a regular novel you, you you know you got more time to build up to something as you i think in that last example where my brother said you know he decided hey you gotta get from here to there in two panels and so you gotta do a lot of, a lot of compression that's so cool. I would not guess that most people would think that theater and plays and comic books are so related, but that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's great because we have a lot of teens who come to the library who are interested in both things. So yeah, bring it all together, bring it, merge everything. If you two don't mind, I have one more question. Sure, sure, sure. Cool. So uh, you were talking a little bit about like you would present this script to your brother and you're imagining that it will play out in this way. And he's like, actually, no, we have to do it this way. So communication is really important because it's not, you're not making the whole book by yourself. You're doing half of the work, right? Correct. So um, I'm sure it's a little easier to communicate with somebody you, you grew up with, like your brother right. who you've been collaborating with forever. But can you talk a little bit about how you make sure you're communicating well with whichever artist you're working with or other collaborators you're working with. What sure. kind of, yeah, like how do you make sure that everything flows smoothly? Right, and I think you're right. Working with my brother is, is much easier because I don't have to do a lot of explaining to him. I, I, can, say, I can say, I want this to take place. And then I can say, hey, remember when we went to so-and-so and then he has, he has all the context. Somebody else who doesn't know me, or they only know me by working, I now have to say, you know, I want him to be walking down the street. And, you know, like, I can't just say downtown Philly. I might just say in an urban, urban area. Or I might say, where are you from? And they say, I'm from Houston. I say, well, look, tell me, you know, one, we got to get to know each other. But two, you know, I also use a lot of reference pictures. And so I'll, I'll, I'll capture pictures. And to put uh, walking down the street, and I'll say like this, and I'll say fit, you know, have a picture. I, I make a separate document, uh, figure one, and it's um, Main Street, USA. So once again, they have some some reference. But two, you know, yes, you do, we do have to do a lot of uh, uh, going back and forth. I I generally work on a six panel per page um, for most of the pages. Um, I usually have a full, a full page, and then sometimes I'll split a page half and half. Um, I try not to get into all the, hey, yeah, make this, make this panel a little more, like on that page, it had an angle to it. That's not for me to do. There's the, the artist also has his ability and, and to, to interpret what I'm, I'm, I'm putting on the page. So, you know, how someone stands in the foreground, you know, what the, you know, what the focus is, how do you get to the focus, all that depth perception, you know, that, uh, you know, while some of it's in my head, I don't, I really don't have it to say, do it like that. You know, I, I, I can, I can kind of paint the picture, but then they're the ones that can massage the picture. So yes, it does take a lot of communication. When we first worked on our first comic book back in the nineties, we we did it in two separate cities 
and we were scanning the stuff back and forth because we didn't have, there were no computers, no personal computers at that time. So um, uh, let me see. So it's, yeah, it just takes a lot of, a lot of communication. Yeah, so my last question was, what would you do differently or like what advice would you give to your teenage self that you think could make, would have made your world a little easier in becoming a professional writer? You know, it what was, I think a challenge was we didn't know anybody and I, like our parents didn't know people who were in that business. You know, even though my aunt was in publishing, like even to know what 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 she did in publishing, um, that that, I don't, it, that that was like another field, another world that that people just didn't know anything about. Um, here's here's a funny thing. Um, I know you've probably seen movies like um, Sinbad and 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 uh, the old King Kong, where the creatures are moving. You know, uh, stop motion. Uh, uh, characters we used to do that in our basement we had the um the setup we made armatures um we had the stop motion camera we did editing but the only people that saw our movies were our friends because we didn't we weren't connected in any kind of way that anybody could see what we did we made movies and we had special effects in our movies disappearing bleaching out uh making things go backwards doing all that on a super eight but you know, so I don't know. I can't say well, we, what could you do different. I don't know. How, how do you say? How do I find people who, who were in the business? But no, it, all of that, all of that experience informed me how I do my work, informed me how I inter interact. Um, you know, my, my brother, he trained. You know, he transitioned into, into television and film. Um, you know, I'm doing my thing. Other brothers are, are, are well, um, my other brother is, is doing his thing with, with graphics and, and making films. Um, so no, I, I, all of that has helped me do whatever I've been trying to do. And, and opportunities have come all throughout my life. Hey, guy, can you work on this book? Can you work on this? Can you work on this? I think they're great. I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying I don't, I don't think I've ever said I wanted to be a professional writer. I just said I like to do it. I love that. I feel like that would be inspiring. Uh, yeah, you just you just yeah. do what you do what you like to do, and it's it's going to take you someplace. You know, look, I've I've been on t uh, on television. My work's been on the Arsenio Hall show. Um, my uh, our comic book is archived in the African American Museum in D.C. and and some other museums around the country. Um, um, you know, so all those things came from, you know, sprouted from um, writing that little little notebook when I was <laughs> when I was a kid and a teenager. You know, walking this walking Germantown Avenue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's really amazing. So I know. Oh, so sorry. I was like, could you just repeat that advice one more time so we can? No, all all I say is do what you like to do. Um, don't let people deter you because. A lot of times, if they don't understand it, some, either they, they, they have a hard time supporting it. it. I think today it's easier to find your support group because through social media and social groups. Um, um, you know, those avenues are there that maybe people before you didn't, didn't have. But, you know, you just do your thing. You know, you take the time, build your crap. You know, like I said, I, I, I got books on screenwriting. Uh, and, you know, did I read every book all the way through? I would read, I said, okay, I think I get it. And I'll try it. Um, 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 I took, you know, I took a course on it. Some courses were free. Some courses, you know, I paid, paid a little money. Um, I, now, I do wish um, at some places where I were, I wish they had those courses, but I had to find them. I found them later. You know, I, a lot of things now are at your fingertips just I just say go out and make it happen you know life life is too short and if you want to you want to do it hey um someone's going to help you find it find a way to make it happen yes that's great I'm going to take that myself right yeah, yeah. do that thing <laughs> but we are a little bit short on time 
but I know you have uh, some upcoming projects and we would love to hear about them at least briefly so we can kind of get excited okay. about it. Well, um, we are at the tail end. I was tapped to do um, uh, uh, Walter D. Meyer's Bad Boy, um, that book. And so I think into next year, because um, they're still wrapping up the artwork. Um, and so excited about that. I have a real big project now. This one is hush hush, but um, this is this is probably going to be you know people say oh this is going to be your crown crowning jewel. It's going to be it's big. It's a uh, another. It used to be, it was a film and it's a, it's a book and I'm working now. That one I can't talk about yet because we haven't gotten there. But uh, you'll you'll keep your eyes open. Um, and let me see. Um, and like I said, also uh, working uh, on a on a cartoon. We'll see where that leads us. And and another film. I think I'll definitely know by October where it's going to go. So a lot, a lot of good things are happening. And of course, my brother, you know, he has a number of books coming out, and some of them some of them are here at the library. Well, it sounds like we'll just have to talk to you again sometime. <laughs> when when those things come out, then I'll, I'll tap you and say, okay, here's an update. Yeah, and I'm sure if you're doing a graphic novel adaptation of Bad Boy, I'm sure we're going to end up trying to buy a copy of it for our collection. We do so. own both the novel and the graphic novel Monster mm -hmm. as adapted by Guy Sims. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, we just got a bunch of brand new unmarked copies that are on our giveaway cart for our Summer of Wonder, which is uh, free for teens ages 12 to 18. When you sign up with us, you get two free books. And if you want, one of them can be this book. Okay, what a deal, what a deal. I know, <laughs> we think so too. Um, so in the meantime, if anybody has any follow-up questions for Guy Sims about his work in comic books and all of the scripting and writing, uh, you can get in touch with us. We have all of our contact information in the description box, and we can send those questions along for him to answer if he has time. Uh, we can also answer questions in person at Field Teen Center. And of course, Dr. Guy Sims does also work at the Free Library. Yeah, um, right. yeah and I wanted to ask a bunch of questions about that too, because you do some really interesting and important work for the library. But like I said, I think that just means we'll have to talk again sometime. So yeah. keep your eyes peeled on this space, everybody, because we're going to be doing more like this. We want to get you information about how to get cool jobs. <laughs> so... Yeah, thank you so much for uh, giving us some of your time today and sharing thank your knowledge. You for I do appreciate it. Yeah, and I think that's it. I think we got to head out, unfortunately. But yeah, thank you so much. And I hope you both have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you, you soon, Melissa. All right, enjoy yourselves. Thank Bye -bye. you.